Thanks for joining me for this edition of the Church Security Answer Man. Remember in 2019, the white settlement church shooting that occurred? That's a great example of today that I, what we're talking about today, because I want to prepare you for those kind of quick decisions we might have to make on whether we should let somebody come in or whether we need to eject somebody or kick them out of church or keep them from coming in. So in that incident in white settlement, uh, you know, we saw that guy showed up with a beard, a fake beard, a fake wig. Uh, I believe he had a trench coat on and he was known to them to be coming a little bit more irritated with them and angry, I think because they had started cutting back on how much they were helping him versus how much he wanted. So as we look at this today, we need to answer that question, I think. And, you know, I hate to I hate to talk about this because I know I'm going to get lambasted. The drive-by folks, I get the emails. What does church come to that you won't let the sick and injured in? People that are needing church the most we're kicking them out. And hey, I respect that perspective. I think it's a little bit more of a drive-by situation where you're just looking at the title and leaving me a note. Because I think we realistically, if we're involved in the church, we have to care about the masses and we should care about them receiving the message, getting the word, uh, those kind of things. And so to do that, we have to you know, weed out folks sometimes that are going to be disruptive to this. So let's talk about this very important topic and uh, and the and the reasons for it. And, and we're going to go right down to some of the things that we might see that the reason why we do that. As we eject people from church, you know, the decision to ask someone to leave needs to be made with the idea that you're preserving safety, security, the sanctity of the service, and the well-being of your congregation. And that's just not their physical safety, but I believe it's also their mental safety. They need to feel comfortable coming to your church and being in your church services if they're going to come back and if they're going to be ministered to. So it's all around, I think, very important for us to discuss this. You know, if we're seeing things ahead of time that tell us that this person might not, might cause an issue when they come in, as they saw at White Settlement, they ended up following him around because they knew something wasn't right. They let him in and followed him around. And sure enough, things broke out that uh, was terrible. And I'm not critical of them because we all have to make this decision, uh, I think, many Sundays or many Saturdays whenever you meet. So so let's talk about these things. You know, it should involve when you're 86 and somebody are ejecting them from church or asking them to leave. Uh, you know, it should involve respecting their rights and dignity of everybody involved. So as, as soft as we can do this, as polite as we can do this, it's good for our congregation if they're seeing this, the people in church, but it's also good to respect that person because, you know, we can still minister to them later, uh, even though we're uh, ejecting them from the church or asking them to leave. It should be a tiered approach to handling threats as far as I see. First of all, talking to them, you know, let that you can, you can let them stay. You can watch them. I've done this on numerous occasions, uh, uh, several in just the last two or three years where somebody doesn't seem right. And one of us on the security team goes in and stands or sits near them and watches them. So we're there just in case, because th things don't seem right. And I'm all about, I, I want them to be ministered to. I want them to be there. So don't get me wrong in this, but it's a topic we have to discuss. And I think that we need to discuss it bluntly uh, and to the point, because your mind needs this material in case you have to make a quick decision on whether somebody's coming into the church or not, or whether you need to eject them. So talk to them, let them stay, watch them. That's one great uh, example, one great way of handling things. Ask them to sit in a side room. If you have a TV room, we happen to have a TV room at our church where you can monitor and listen to the service. And I've taken people down there. Our team has taken people down there to let them watch the service, but we're not going to let them go in because we sense something's not right and they're going to end up disturbing uh, people within the auditorium. So uh, you can ask them to wait outside and bring somebody to them to be ministered to as well. Don't forget that's an option. So there's several layers to this that we can use to uh, still minister, still try to minister to people and be respectful of them. We certainly want to do that. Treat them with respect and dignity. Then we can get into the ask them to leave segment. You know, get their info to contact them later. 
we can always talk to them and minister to them later when they get better. So, and ask them to leave return when they're better. So we can go minister to them when they sober up or when they have a better day, if they're having an anger issue or something, or we can uh, tell them when you mellow out, you can come back. And I've done that. I can think of one time specifically, a guy that was actually uh, yelling in our church or just outside the doors. We had asked him, he wanted to play his guitar during the service with the worship team. And he'd never practiced with the worship team or anything. He literally brought his guitar in because he was going to insist that he go play with the worship team. And he'd already made some comments that people tell him he's schizophrenic all the time and those kind of things. So, uh, And so I told him he couldn't play his guitar with the team until he came and practiced with the team and uh, got approved by the team. And so that made him angry. And he went outside and started yelling. So we ended up calling the police on him that day. Uh, just because of his anger and his tended to be seemed to be a little bit violent and his outbursts. But I did tell him after the police asked him to leave and he was starting to leave, I said, hey, when you're having a better day, if you want to act in such a manner that doesn't scare our people and interrupt our service, then you're more than welcome to come back. So, so we can ask him to leave and we can let them come back later. And we can just plain and simple ask him to leave as well. And we can also call the police. That's another option in the uh, tiered approach to handling threats. So, you know, it's just not really about kicking somebody out. It's, you know, we don't just 86 them kind of thing. We have different levels and they kind of, their behavior and their attitude kind of rules that or, or, or helps us make those decisions depending on how dramatic they are or how well, they try to get back under control or whatever that looks like. So we have a lot of options when it comes to asking folks to leave. You know, why eject people? You know, why eject threats, people from church? One is to maintain a safe environment. You know, we have to ensure the safety and security of all of the people attending church, all of our members, you know, elderly individuals, there can be vulnerable people within church. They can be sensitive emotionally to these kind of things. We need to protect them and plain and simple, protect the integrity of the worship or the message. If you and I aren't trying to protect that and keep people focused on the worship or the message and things interfere with that, then it's almost like they're wasting their time. Everybody's wasting their time. The pastor or priest is trying to deliver a message. People are trying to receive that message, but people can't concentrate because there's some kind of interference going on. Uh, to the service, to your, to the message. So we need to protect that. And that would be one reason why we would eject someone, send somebody away from our service. And we can see that ahead of time uh, as they're trying to come into the service. We might be able to detect that possibility, or we might see it once they're in the service. And so we have those different options. That's why being at the front door and screening people is very important. Uh, suspicious or dangerous behavior, whatever that looks like, you know, they're talking to themselves, they're maybe they're can't stand still and they're flailing their arms a little bit. Uh, you know, I don't know what that might be, but it's something that you don't see very often, you know, and we need to eject people or ask them to leave based on they're not helping us to maintain order and respect of the people and the sanctity of that service. That is so important. Allowing God to communicate with people through your ministers, through your leaders, that's important. We need to protect that opportunity uh, for the masses, for the, for the people, for the congregation. We need to keep our people from feeling distress or discomfort or stress, being stressed out. We need to protect our vulnerable and our sensitive people. And you may not be sensitive, but there's some people in our services that if somebody stood up and yelled a little bit or talked a little bit longer, did something out of the ordinary, a little longer and a little louder, laughed a little longer, a little louder than everybody else, it might make them very nervous and uncomfortable. And they might not want to come back. And that's sad. We don't want that happening because of another individual's behaviors or choices uh, in their life as I see it. Reasons to potentially remove a person from church, disruptive behavior. We've kind of been alluding to that. You know, the wrong timing when they're clapping or they're loud or they're talking loud. It's just wrong timing and it's out of place. And it's so it interferes 
with a message that people are trying to get. Uh, they're intoxicated or they're uh, under the influence of some sort of substance, some sort of intoxicant. If you can detect that, you know, going into the service, they may, especially if they're under the influence of alcohol or something, they may be very, you can smell it. Uh, you may can see it, obviously, and that's going to disrupt people around them. You would be surprised how much little things will begin to disrupt people. In fact, I've got a little side story. Uh, we had a, a young lady come in uh, one time to our service, and she snuck in a little gerbil uh, in her little little coat. And when she got into the back seat, back of the service area, she was sitting like the second row from the back. And that gerbil began to come out and it began to just do its little noises and was in her hands and stuff. And when I walked into the auditorium and looked and saw that, I could see that those two back rows, and in fact, I believe somebody in the third row, so one more up from her, everybody was turned around looking at that. It was cute. It was the cutest thing, but nobody was paying attention to the service. And then it began to do its little squeaks. And it, it was just a total interruption and it different than a normal interruption. It wasn't because it was something bad. It was a cute, the cutest little thing, but the reality is it was still disrupting the service. And so in that case, I ended up asking her to go down to the TV room. So we didn't completely kick her out. Uh, and, uh, and I asked her next time not to bring her gerbil with her, but in that service, we didn't immediately kick her out because I am sensitive and our team is sensitive to try to let people be ministered to. Threatening or aggressive behavior, whatever that looks like. So they're aggressive, they're angry, they're mad. Any violation of your church policies, if they don't want to comply, if you're asking them to comply, whatever that is. Some of you may have an attire of what they're supposed to wear and they're not complying with that. And so, uh, and there may be other policies that your church has. Security concerns, whatever, that's kind of a lumps of few things in there. But if you have security concerns about them, if they're displaying things like they're wearing a fake wig and a fake uh, beard and a trench coat and they're acting kind of weird, those are some huge security concerns. And don't forget, you have multiple, multiple options that we talked about. You can go back and look at those earlier in this uh, video. You know, suspicious attire, suspicious behavior. I'm trying to cover all the bases here. Weird conversations, you know, loud yelling, screaming, you know, and it's just, again, wrong timing kind of goes back to the first one there. And, you know, weird conversations, suspicious attire. Uh, you know, another situation that I encountered, and I want you to know where my perspective is coming from. I had this young man who uh, he was standing in the lobby, leaned up against the wall. He had his foot up on the walls, which is kind of weird, kind of disrespectful. It's dirtying up the wall and stuff. You know, not a huge deal. I've seen other people do it. But he was combing his hair, and this is right in the middle of the people in the lobby at our entrance. He's combing his hair, and his hair is kind of out of sorts anyway. And so I went to interview him, went to screen him a little bit, talk to him. And we walked down to where I got him a free coffee and donut. And as we're walking, I'm talking to him and he begins, I've asked him where he's coming from. Does he live around here? And through that quick conversation, it was very friendly. You know, he ends up telling me that he moved from a town up north in Washington, the state of Washington, where it rains a lot and he just couldn't stand the rain anymore. And everybody around him was telling him he was schizophrenic. And so through that process, I began to see that he could be an issue, but he was being very mellow and calm. And so we did let him go into service. And later, as I mentioned earlier, he's the one I was talking about earlier about yelling and screaming. Eventually he became a problem. But at first we let him go into service and we watched him. And then after the service, he came out and then that's when the problem started. So I'm all about trying to let people be ministered to, let them hear everything that they should hear. And, and then I go back to the beginning I want to reinforce that, you know, you need to feel good about the decisions you make. In the first slide we started with, you know, it's got to be with intentions of preserving safety, security, sanctity, and the well-being of your congregation. And, and that sanctity is that your service is able to continue uninterrupted. 
It's we're not doing this because of a bias against someone. We're doing it because of their actions or because of the situation. And we're concerned about the safety. And it's got to involve respecting people. You have the right now in your church. Most of you have the right to refuse entry for people or refuse service. And so we can do that. Now, certainly our leadership says, hey, we got to be careful about that because we can't be kicking people out all the time when they're trying to come to church. And I get that. But you still have the right to do that. And, and you should look into that. Don't take my words as legal advice. Look into that. But you have the right to ask people to leave or to stay out and not come in. But it should involve respect of their rights and dignity. We need to try to do the best we can, use our words be kind to people, use those options that we talked about so that uh, we're being respectful of them. And maybe we can pick a lesser option than calling the police, but maybe we end up having to call the police and we should try to ask them to leave. But maybe in the end, because of their behavior and stuff, we have to uh, take a hold of them and escort them out. But we do that as best we can with respect and dignity. I hope that you'll connect with us, like, and subscribe. Subscribing is very important. I hope you'll connect with us. Leave a comment down below. Hey, if you disagree with me, I talked about I get that quite a bit. If you disagree with me, leave that comment as to why you disagree with me. But I hope you'll consider this. I hope you'll talk to your team. Share this with your team because we need the mindset of what are we going to do? I'm not telling you you have to do these things. But let's get the mindset going that what are we going to do if this kind of stuff happens so that we're prepared for that kind of incident to happen and we can make a quick decision to protect our people.